Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and welcome to the channel. I'm here at West Tech Performance and today we are going old school. We're taking a look at a five liter Ford and no, not the Coyote, the other one, the fuel injected five liter Ford because Kenny Bell has reintroduced their supercharger kit for the five liter Ford. So we're gonna do an install and a chassis data test, naturally aspirated and after adding the blower, lots of cool stuff. So let's jump right in. Test motor was a 1993 5-liter 302 Cobra motor, which meant it had the Cobra-style upper and lower intake manifold. This one had been replaced by an Explorer upper. It had the 65-millimeter throttle body. It had the larger mass air meter. This one had an open element air filter inside an old Kenny Bell enclosure. This one had a stock camshaft. It had the Cobra roller rockers. This one was equipped with equal length shorty headers, but a full exhaust with cats and cat back and everything that comes with a 93 Cobra motor. Place it underneath the return hose. You want a screwdriver? Nope. Push it with your fingers, unplug it. If the strap's not on there, make sure it doesn't fall inside the intake. So they don't have the safety strap on there? If it does not have the safety strap. Yeah. Right now is going to be a good idea. We're going to put uh, let's put the let's put either a rag or duct tape on or duct tape on the intake manifold to make sure it doesn't fall. Down. There's only going to be a slight dribble of fuel, depending on how long the car's been off.
First step, what we gotta put in is the long one. That whole supercharger up. So this is for, for the fuel evap fuel pressure regulator. Yep. That one's going to be your PVC valve that you originally installed prior. On the back of the manifold, that goes over to the tree. That goes to the vacuum tree, controls the brake booster, the air conditioning, the speed control, and all the emissions. Sweet. And then over here, we got the bypass valve and the FMU. Correct. See you guys. Have a good day, Chris. So for this bracket, is that why the pulley's not on the blower? That's correct. Okay. The pulley goes on. The pulley goes on last. Uh, yeah, okay. I got that taken care of back so yeah, all the so is is this bracket loose or does it not matter? Right now the bracket is loose. Okay. You start all the bolts first. Yeah. Once. No, I mean not this one. This one was that. Is that 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 That's gets tight? anchored? Okay. That gets anchored tight. Okay. Then you put this one on. Yep. Once this goes on, you start all the bolts. Yeah. Once everything is, especially this. Yeah. This has to be on first. Yeah. Then you can tighten down the nose. On, on the um, blower on the, snout, right? On the okay. snout. Then you tighten this down. Then you tighten down the rest. If you tighten down the rest and then try the snout, yeah. you can bend the snout down. Nobody wants a bent shaft. Nobody likes a bent shaft. We're going to disconnect the air AC line that's already been discharged. Okay. Snap ring. Take a plastic bag off your do whatever, don't let your infant play with it. Or, yeah. So we're moving the old belt. Watch where you're walking, man. Okay. So down here. Up. And that all depends on how you got it down at the bottom. First start up. Now we can take a look at the power output of our 1993 Cobra motor run naturally aspirated on the chassis dyno. This thing produced 226 horsepower, runs varied between 221 or 222 up to 226, and 277 foot-pounds of torque. Now let's take a look and see what happens after we added the Kenny Bell supercharger. After adding the Kenny Bell supercharger at a peak boost of only five and a half pounds run in emissions legal trim, and we'll get to that in just a second, the power output jumped up to 310 horsepower and 345 foot-pounds of torque. This was just with the aid of the FMU to add the additional fuel under boost. No changes to timing run with the 65 millimeter throttle body the way that the Cobra came. 
We thought that the stock Cobra throttle body might be restricting the Kenny Bell even at this boost level, so we decided to try a larger 75mm throttle body. Unfortunately, all we had was a 75mm throttle body and a 70mm EGR spacer, but we ran that test and it improved the power output quite a bit. The peak power output jumped to 325 horsepower and 377 foot-pounds torque. The additional airflow of the larger throttle body improved the boost pressure offered by the Kenny Bell by a little over one pound. The final test involved our own version of cold air intake. Rather than having the open element filter inside this Kenny Bell air box, we took the filter element and basically just aimed it up so it was up in the airflow with a fan, and the results were pretty impressive. It did indeed improve power. The peak power output jumped to 336 horsepower and 380 foot-pounds of torque. I guess cold air really works. That completed our testing for today on the Kenny Bell Supercharged 5-liter floor. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep on testing.